Hey guys, this is Prashant Kumar again. Uh, this is my, I think, day five for the challenge in which I'm trying to talk to everybody for what is involved for an active investor in the syndication business. I'm trying to impart as much knowledge as I can and by no means I am an expert. Please don't take my, my discussions or what I'm talking as it is. Please do consult your legal advisors, attorneys, and your mentors on how to proceed. So far, touched based on, you know, how to talk to the brokers, you know, submitting the LOI. If you are not talking to the brokers and if you're not submitting LOIs, you are missing out on something. Um, you know, th that's the core of the business. Number two, we have talked about how, you know, what are the GP portion, GP pie. We have talked about what are the different different GP fees involved. Today, I'm starting to talk about steps involved in the syndication process. This is extremely complicated. I don't think I will be able to finish that today, but I will continue it from today onwards for as many days as it takes, okay? So first thing, if you are stepping into the business is you have to decide whether you are an active investor or a passive investor. If you are a passive investor, uh, we can talk about it. It's, it's simpler stuff. But for active investors, you know, you need to decide. Uh, the first thing you need to decide is what, where do you want to invest in? Are you investing in uh, which markets are you are you planning to invest in? Basically, uh, you have to choose your markets, your markets, your neighborhoods. You know, you have to choose them, and then. You have to start talking to the brokers in those areas and as as you get the OMS from your brokers, you know, you do a little bit of analysis, you know, two minutes analysis, five minutes analysis and start putting LOIs, you know, to, for the properties which are making sense, right? Putting LOIs and, you know, if you, if you look at 100 properties, if you submit LOIs on 30, you know, your goal is that you should have, you should have contract on few of them at least, right? So once you have, so once you are starting putting the LOIs, at that point you should be able to start talking to various local, pro, you know, property management companies also. If this is the first time you are getting into that market, uh, you know, various GC companies, you know, general contractor companies, um, who probably can help you in terms of the construction on the property, right? And then you you continue to build your team. In that in those markets property managers general contractors you start talking to the local banks right you start talking to the local banks or you start talking to the brokers basically the the finance brokers um you know kind of keep them up up, up to speed that you, you something is coming and the moment you have loi accepted you ask for offering memorandum make sure you have offering memorandum you have t12 Operating agreement, operating statement, you know, training 12, T3, and rent roll for the property. At that point, once you have these three sets of information, at that point, you have to do your underwriting. The underwriting that you had done before really submitting an LOI was a very preliminary uh, underwriting. Now you have to go deeper um, into your underwriting. You really have to see all the components for the property you have to go visit the property right possibly with your uh, property manager and with with one or two construction companies who can look at the property you, you have to analyze the neighborhood and then you have to ask for some estimates from from these gc companies how much is it going to cost what is your business plan i mean how how much do you plan to invest uh, how much i mean are the are the units down how is the area? Is the area upcoming? You have to drive around the area. So you have to do all of these things in parallel. The moment you have the moment you have a contract signed, you have to start getting into the nitty gritty details of what kind of improvements are you planning to make on the property? Because at that point, your due diligence period has already started, right? So so that is very important. You know, we will we will talk about uh, a little bit later 
we will talk about underwriting you know what all are the components involved in underwriting uh, basically but uh, as as you go along you know you need to be talking to a finance broker because if your property is down and if you are in a bridge kind of situation you know if your uh, occupancy is less than 80 percent and and you know there are some units down you may have to have a bridge loan if you have a bridge loan basically you have to uh, you have to have uh, I mean you have to have a plan how you are going to fix it when these how much is it going to cost and and what is your projection that your occupancy will go up right so you have to start talking to your brokers finance brokers who can give you estimates uh, i mean not estimates who can hook you up into various bridge products in the in the market right and you have to start talking so this this everything is sort of in in parallel while you are talking to your gcs you are talking to the finance brokers and you are talking to your property manager also because property manager is doing the due diligence at that point right so so these are the few things that you have started but you have not started you have not started uh, you know anything yet on your uh, your offering memorandum you have not started anything any pitch deck yet right so as these things start getting um, solidified you know your property manager property manager is doing your um, due diligence your gc has given you some numbers you are getting some quotes from from various lenders you start putting all those numbers into your underwriting and based on your underwriting you start putting together your pitch deck the pitch deck which is which is the most important part because you need to be pitching to your investors so you you know think about it how many things that you are doing at the same time i've not talked about few more which most likely I think I will end up talking tomorrow because uh, I cannot continue you know this is this is only t less than 10 minutes of uh, talking right so I mean to begin with itself the moment you have the contract you need to have property manager you need to have your GC you need to do your underwriting and you need to put together your pitch deck um, ASAP having said that these things are sort of in the initial stages but you should you have to start talking to the folks who can do the money raise for you right if you have a team whether you're going to do the money raise or not or you know folks who are who are who want to come on board with you you have to start talking to them you have to start talking to the kp the person who would probably sign on your loan so those things start uh, you know that's the beginning stage as i mean i call it you know first week as soon as you have the contract you are very busy trying to do some of these things and and I mean I understand that these are like in the beginning right it's not like you it's not that you have done the due diligence you have completed the due diligence you are still vetting um, your you know you are you are still vetting whether this is this deal makes sense because in the due diligence period unless your money has gone hard you can still walk out so you have 30 to 45 days where you can you want to do as much analysis as possible and want to make sure that this is the deal you really want to do right so at that point you start uh, i mean in, in first couple of weeks you have to be really very very busy you have to test the waters whether you can if it is a 10 million dollar raise can you really do it i mean it's a if you are getting into those territories you know so those kind of things you have to start looking at and towards the end of the due diligence phase you should be pretty much confident that yes this is going to be my loan amount this is going to be my um, you know this is going to be my loan uh, percentage this is the property manager sort of I mean decide almost decide that this is going to proper this is going to be my property manager I'm working with this broker who is going to get me the loan from this lender right having said that things do go in the different directions you know your lender may retrade you your property manager may walk out from you depending upon their capacity or not so many, many things can happen simpler deals deals they go easily but hairy deals go 
uh, you know, they don't go so smooth. So, I mean, I'm just running out of time right now, but I will continue to talk a little bit more about these things as we go along tomorrow and the day after. I mean, I have done very difficult deals also. That's why I have, I have that kind of experience and I want to impart that to the group as much as I can at the same time don't want to scare everybody um, that it is really that difficult some deals are very easy also but because it is I'm out of time I would try to keep it short um, not not make it that long again guys thank you so much appreciate your time um, you know if you have any questions please call me or please send me an email prashant at multifamilyrealtygains.com uh, i would respond uh, try to respond to you and uh, you know i have a i have a uh, mastermind online free mastermind uh, feel free if you want to join you're welcome um, and uh, you know i plan to start a podcast soon um, I am actually I, I am starting to buy some equipment to do my podcast, uh, and I'm talking on my Blue Yeti uh, microphone right now. Uh, I'll just show it. You know, here it is. This is the microphone I just bought. So hopefully you are hearing me clearly, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate your time, and 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 have a great day. Thank you. Bye bye.